All right, welcome back to AP Statistics. Still not affiliated with the College Board. This is Dr. Kling, and I'm going to go on to talk more about the topic of t-tests or t-intervals. First, I want to talk about the issue of sample size and whether so whether these calculations can be trusted. And if they can't be trusted, there's really no alternative, um, so that you really can't do anything trustworthy. Generally, if your sample size is greater than, I'll say, 40, you can use different rules of thumb. Let's say greater than 40, uh, these can be trusted, almost regardless. Uh, maybe if you had some huge outlier, it would, it would be a bad idea. If it's between 20 and 40, uh, you can be trusted if no outliers. And we'll have various measures of outliers later on in the course. Or, no, just one measure of outlier. But uh, for now, let's say about three standard deviations away from the mean, of, away from the sample mean, I guess, because that's all we have, would be uh, that would be considered an outlier, and if you have an outlier, you don't want to trust these calculations with a sample between 20 and 40. With a sample of less than 20, um, actually, in my background in economics, we would just say, you know, we would laugh you out of the room if you walked in with a, a sample size of less than 20 and claimed that you could do any uh, statistical inference on it, but I guess in other fields they they feel comfortable using a sample size less than 20 as long as no outliers outliers and not skewed and I don't know of any formal measure of skewness but you know skewed means that the mean and the median are too far apart so skewed means that the mean and the median are too far apart from each other. So as a rough rule of thumb, I might say a half a standard deviation. Uh, if they're a half a standard deviation apart or more, then it's skewed. And if it's skewed and the sample size is less than 20, then you don't want to use T methods. Uh, you can't. You don't want to use T intervals or uh, T hypothesis tests. You're really uh, kind of out of luck uh, in that in that situation. Okay, so those are some rules of thumb regarding sample size. Now I want to go on and talk about a um, a let's say a two sample T test. And that arises when you're comparing two samples, not, not too surprisingly. Suppose we had a group of students who <coughs> uh, had not taken a special SAT course, and their mean verbal SAT was 550. So let's say there, was a, there were 20 in the sample, and their X bar was 550 and their S was uh, 40. Then we had another group of, let's say, 16 students who had had some uh, SAT coaching and their X bar was 558 with an S of <coughs> 31. And we want to ask, is this difference statistically significant? Okay, so that would be a two sample t test. Okay, so we'll do stat tests, and then we'll go down to two sample t test. Okay, and I've entered the data already. Um, save you some time of having to watch it, and then I'm going to the 
alternative hypothesis is that mu1 is less than mu2, um, and that is that the students with the intervention did better. Um, we'll get, we have this pooled question, which is do we assume that the two samples have the same standard deviation? And almost all the time the answer to that is no. And now we calculate. Okay, and we get the crucial things is the t value of minus 0.67 and a p of 0.25. So we got a t equals minus 0.67 and a p value of 0.25. Remember that's a pretty high p-value, and a high p-value means that we fail to reject the null hypothesis. And so what we conclude is that we cannot conclude that the second group did better than the first group. Okay, so that's an example of a two-sample t-test, and I'll have more to talk about next time.